There have been plenty of good action movies over the years, but there's one thing that takes the movie from simply being good to being iconic. It's the delivery of one great line of dialogue. Welcome to Cinema Pills. Today we're giving you our picks for the top 10 best movie quotes of all time. We acknowledge that there are way more than 10 choices for this list. So as we go on, be sure to listen and think about what movies you would add. Comment those movies below. Maybe they'll be a part two. Also, before we start, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. There are plenty more videos to come and we want you to be there for all of them. Now, let's get on to it. Number 10. Are you not entertained? Maximus Gladiator. Ladies, if you've ever wondered what type of movie will make men cry, look no further than Gladiator. It is a tale of the general of the Roman army who was betrayed and his family murdered. Now, his life is about vengeance. After being left for dead, a group of slavers finds Maximus and trains him to be a gladiator. Besides staying alive, the most important thing is to win the crowd. But this frustrates Maximus, and in one match, after killing his opponent, he looks around and lets out his frustration with that iconic line, Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is that why you are here? Loving the rebellious character, the crowd cheers for him even louder in the matches to come. The lesson from this movie would be, don't betray a man and leave him alive. Otherwise, he'll come back and stab you in the throat with your own dagger. Number 9. Kneel Before Zod General Zod, Superman 2 Superman is arguably the greatest superhero of all time, and no one played the part better than Christopher Reeve. Shot subsequently with Superman the movie, Superman 2 saw the villains as three Kryptonian criminals who escaped their banishment into the Phantom Zone. After escaping, they had only one thing in mind, revenge against Jor-El, the one who sealed their fates. Unfortunately, by the time they escaped, he had long since died. But Superman, the son of Jor-El, was alive and was now the target of their revenge. After flying to Earth, these beings with the same powers as Superman wrecked havoc on the planet, eventually drawing Superman into a fight. As the battle for Metropolis starts, Superman flies off and just before the chase starts, Zod hit him with the one line, Come to me, son of Jor-El, kneel before Zod. It wasn't just the line, but it was the tone that actor Terrence Stamp used. It commanded authority and portrayed ferocity at the same time. It was a great line. Number 8. yippee Kaye, mother! Well, John McClane, die hard. Whether you think of this as a Christmas movie or not, you have to admit, John McClane was as bad as they come. I mean, we can all relate, right? We go to someone else's awkward Christmas party and in comes a group of bad guys with guns wanting to steal lots of valuable art that is locked in a really big vault downstairs. I hate those days, don't you? Well, so does McClane. But being an off-duty cop, he has the skills needed to fight back. And after fighting and killing two henchmen, he gets their radios and has a nice conversation with the ringleader Hans. After a bit of witty banner, Gruber asks McClane, Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? To which McLean responds with that classic line, yippee ki mother. This line, while comedic, gave the audience the perfect idea of who John McLean really was. Do you really think you have a chance against us, Mr. Cowboy? yippee ki motherfucker. A funny guy who loved killing bad guys. Before we end this entry, we do have to do a shameless plug. We recently released our top 10 Christmas movies video. Die Hard made the list. Yes, it's a Christmas movie. Go watch it to see our arguments. Number 7. Then we will fight in the shade. Stelios. 300. 300 was an artistic marvel from director Zack Snyder about the 300 Spartan soldiers who held off an attack against a Parisian army of nearly a million. We here at Cinema Pills don't claim to be good at math, but there's quite a difference in those numbers. That difference is leveled out though because the Spartans had something that the Parisians didn't have. They had an army of free men. Although many would think of the line of this movie going to King Leonidas, played by Gerard Butler, we have chosen a different character. Before the battle begins, the Parisian army sent a representative to offer terms. He's greeted by Stelios, played by Michael Fassbender. Things go a little south and the Parisian emissary gets his arm cut off. The person gives one last threat before retreating. A thousand nations of the Parisian Empire will descend upon you. Our arrows will blot out the sun. Stelios, with a calm and amused demeanor, simply replies, Then we will fight in the shade. It is one of the best lines to describe exactly what type of army the Spartans were. Our arrows will blot out the sun. Then 
we will fight in the shade. No matter what the odds or the situation, no retreat, no surrender. Number six, you ever dance with the devil by the pale moonlight? Joker from Batman. There have been many interpretations of the Joker over the years, from Heath Ledger to Jared Leto. In 1989, director Tim Burton reinvigorated the Batman franchise with an amazing movie starring Michael Keaton as Batman and Jack Nicholson as the Joker. When compared to other Jokers, Nicholson's portrayal was full of way more shenanigans and he was full of witty one-liners. However, there was something that made his Joker stand out from most others. While yes, he portrayed himself as very humorous, it was evident that he took joy in his killings. In Burton's interpretation of Batman, he gave the Joker a backstory, saying that he was a mobster named Jack Napier. Napier was the shooter who killed Bruce Wayne's parents. In Bruce's flashbacks, he hears Napier's voice utter a catchphrase that he says right before killing someone. You ever dance with the devil by the pale moonlight? Later in the movie, the Joker says the same thing to a now grown up Bruce Wayne just before shooting him. Tell me something, my friend. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Bruce survived the gunshot and then pieced together who his parents' killer was. Yes, we know that this is not the way it was done in the original comics, but this led to a fantastic one-liner. Number five, a census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Dr. Hannibal Lecter, Silence of the Lambs. Ranked as one of the best movies of all time, Silence of the Lambs brought us an amazing villain named Hannibal Lecter. He was a brilliant forensic psychotherapist with an insatiable cannibalistic appetite. After getting caught, he was sent to a prison for the criminally insane to spend the rest of his life. Luckily for him, the FBI thought his intellect was more important than his criminal nature. FBI trainee Clarice Starling was sent to interview him and potentially get information about a serial killer that was on the loose. But Lecter wasn't prone to interviews or being analyzed. As Agent Starling tried to push him a little, Lecter decided to remind her exactly how evil he could be, and the line is now one of the most well-known lines in Hollywood. He said, A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. The cherry on top was the hissing noise made immediately after. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. It was later discovered that the noise was improvised by Anthony Hopkins, but it was perfect. Number four, hasta la vista, baby. It's the world's favorite killer robot. Terminator 2 has been considered by some to be one of the best action sequels of all time. As opposed to the first appearance in the early 80s, the Terminator isn't out to kill Sarah Connor this time. He has been reprogrammed to protect her son John, who is the future leader of the human resistance against the machines. Throughout the movie, we learn that the Terminator possesses the ability to learn. There's even one scene where John Connor teaches him some catchphrases, but it's one of these phrases that comes up handy later in the movie. As they're being pursued by the T-1000, they lure him into a large puddle of liquid nitrogen. This causes the T-1000 to freeze in place from head to toe. As the Terminator raises his gun to blow it away, he drops one of the phrases learned from John in the best Arnold Schwarzenegger voice ever. Hasta la vista, baby. Hasta la vista, baby. Even people who have never seen the movie have heard this phrase. Chances are, it isn't going anywhere soon. Number three, say hello to my little friend. Tony Montana, Scarface. Scarface was one of the best gangster movies of all time, especially when you throw in every bit of exaggerated 80s themes. While it's easy to watch the movie nowadays and laugh at the cheesiness of it, you can still overlook the ruthlessness and ambition of the immortal Tony Montana. One thing that made Montana so awesome was the fact that he never showed fear, no matter how dire the situation was. As a Cuban refugee, he had suffered under the reign of the communist leader Fidel Castro, so he was used to operating under pressure. Eventually, his criminal empire grew, along with his list of enemies. One night, his home was attacked by a rival drug cartel. Many of his men were killed, and eventually, Tony ended up trapped in his office. What does Tony do? He did the most sensible and logical thing that anyone would do. He got out a grenade launcher and shouted the great line, Say hello to my little friend. He blew his way out of the office. Okay. Do you want to play rough? Even though he was eventually killed, he didn't go down without taking most of the attackers with him. 
Number two, and you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Jules Winfield, Pulp Fiction. There's Gangster, and then there's Jules and Vincent from Pulp Fiction. It's hard to tell whether these guys are smart or dumb. But one thing is for sure, they're good at killing and getting what they want. So when their boss, Marcellus Wallace, sends them to retrieve a briefcase, they not only retrieve it, they make an amazing scene out of it. There's no real way to describe the scene because of how random it is. So we'll just go over the main parts in order. Vincent and Jules come in. Jules eats their food. Vincent drops some random knowledge on everyone. The Royale with cheese. Thief tries to apologize. Random guy, just chilling on the couch, gets shot. Jules asks what Marcellus Wallace looks like. After getting shot in the shoulder, they deduct just who Marcellus Wallace doesn't look like. How's that for a quick summary? But the best part is yet to come. Much like Jack Nicholson's Joker, Jules has a line that he quotes right before killing a target. After quoting some Bible verses, Jules raises his gun and shouts the last part of the verse, and you will know my name is Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Dying has never felt so holy. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. Yeah! Before we get to number one, be sure to give our video a like. We want to know that you are enjoying our content. Hit the bell so you can join us again for our next video. Now, number one. I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. Don Vito Corleone, The Godfather. Marlon Brando gave the performance of his life when he portrayed Don Vito Corleone. Many consider The Godfather to be the best film ever made, largely because of the performance from Brando. His character was that of a compassionate family man and loving grandfather. However, there was a darker side to him. Don Vito was the leader of one of the largest crime families in New York City at the time. From judges to police officers, newspaper reporters to attorneys, the Don had everyone bought and paid for. But every once in a while, there would be someone who needed a little bit more convincing. For example, on the day of his daughter's wedding, a day where tradition dictates that the Don cannot refuse a request, a struggling actor asked the Don to help him get a part. The person in charge of the film refused to hire him. When Don Vito agrees and one of his associates asks how he'll do it, the Don simply replies, I'll make him an offer he can't refuse. Big shot's gonna give you what you want. It's too late, they start shooting in a week. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Fast forward a bit, and a guy's waking up with a horse's head in his bed. Did we miss anything? Do you have some other ideas for great one-liners? Leave a comment below. Also, be sure to check out some of our other videos. We are releasing new videos all the time, so stay tuned. We'll see you next time.